my lovers welcome to my channel my name is made for love and tim and today i'm going to be doing a scrying stone reading okay so um with this reading i am channeling messages for yourself your connection maybe even about your person um anything may come through and i'm allowing anything um, to come through um, at this time. So just give me a moment just to um, connect and to just clear my mind. And see. Um, uh, I'm seeing a child. Now this child looks to be about two years old. Mm -hmm. Two years old. And there's something communicating with this child. It's, it's masculine energy. Maybe it's a father. Maybe it's a father. What's happening here? The child is crying, I think. You know that speech that parents give? Well, at least in t movies anyways. When maybe they're going to break up or divorce or, or move away from a job or something like that. You know, um, they love you, but they're not really getting along with each other, that kind of thing. And we see this person exiting. And we see the child crying. I feel like what is being brought up for us today is some sort of abandonment. So whether this scenario played out or if this is spirit showing us an example, um, it's all about an abandonment wound. And then what happened subsequently? So now I see the same child. I see them in the library studying furiously. Um, I see them participating um, in different sports, um, that kind of thing. But whatever they're doing, you can tell they're just trying to get approval from other persons so whether there was an actual physical abandonment or an emotional abandonment when they were young spirit is showing us the consequences of that now there must be a reason why spirit is showing this to us now because we even see this person receiving their flowers okay receiving recognition but they're showing me this person with like a hole inside that there's this void that still aches for more, more attention, more, 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 because it's never enough, right? It's never enough. So maybe a lot of you are processing an abandonment issue right now um, and the legacy of that abandonment issue, whether you have been in, in unbalanced relationships, whether in your friendships, your work life, or your intimate relationships, whether you have people pleased and fawned in so many different ways, um, whether you have attracted partners 
who abandoned you because you abandoned yourself to, to be with them. You abandon yourself and your principles to be with them. It feels like this is something that you're working through right now, or you may have recently worked through it. Um, and this is you, you know, envisioning what the new you um, is going to, how the new you is going to function and operate in relationships. Now, I'm seeing a change of scene. If you have a bookcase um, in your home, what I would like you to do, you know, when you do your meditation, um, your ground and protection, your prayers, when the morning comes, ask that all portals um, be sealed. It's near to a bookcase. It's between a bookcase and there's a power outlet just right next to it. Okay, there, there's a little kind of portal that has opened up there. So um, that needs to be closed. So you can ask the light, whatever your connection to the light is, to close any and all portals that may be in home, your home, especially if you have a bookcase. Okay, it's right there. And guys, it might just be random messages coming through today. Okay, all right. So let's see what else is here. I see someone watching you. I I don't feel this is a person. It's not this person. Um, doesn't have good intentions. Um, towards you, and I feel like they may they may be projecting. Um, a lot of negativity towards you at this time. Oh, where's this person? For some of you, this is someone in work. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have staff meetings or something like that, this person sits right across from you because they like doing that kind of shit. You know, there are some people like that. Why are they doing this? Spirit, could you give us an answer here? Why? Why are they doing this? Looks like they have some kind of shitty home life um, going on. But in work is when they can feel most powerful. This this might even be um a supervisor or a boss. But I like doing this kind of shit to you, especially because they see you as some kind of challenge. Now, if they were getting the satisfaction that they really needed to get out of this, they may not persist. But it feels like, like whenever they dig a little hole for you, it feels like it backfires. Like they're the ones that fall into it. Because they showed me a hole here. This person's just like, like simmering in rage. It's contained, but it's it's there. I feel like they may be quite successful at hiding this rage from a lot of people around them, right? But I feel like you have their number. You know exactly who they are. And that's why you don't fall for their little manipulations and their schemes. You know exactly who this person is and what they want. You know what they want. They want a reaction. They want to see you unsettled. 
but you're not giving that to them and they are seething with rage. I'll ask who this person is because for some of you, this may be connected to um, to your person, your romantic person. So let me ask who is this person. I'll do that in the extended. Who is this person? I'll still ask why they're so angry. But I think I know why. They just, they see you as competition. Whoever this person is, they see as competition and they have, they have yet to get one up on you. This is what I get. We'll drill down into who this person is. But they, they see you as competition. As I, this person like towards a dark cloud wherever they go. There's always this dark cloud, this shadow hanging over them. It, the energy is always off. And maybe other people perceive like they people other people may know like something off with this person. But you have their number. You see exactly who they are. And that might be part of their problem with you. They can't fool you with their shit. Because energy doesn't lie, does it? Feels like you're pissing off a lot of people, though. I see this next one here. I, I, I'm not getting a uh, reading if this person is from your job or connected to your personal life. But they are furious. Furious. Um, It feels like, I don't know. Like, I see them writing, like, a physical letter, but I don't know if it's a physical letter. It could be just spirit representing that, putting that representation of, like, they're, they're, they're crafting some sort of communication, whoever this person is, and they are highly annoyed. Just see them going, 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 writing in a frenzy. They have something in front of them, like on the desk, that, that's pissing them off even more. I don't know if they have something of yours or they've found something. Um, and this has, this has made them very angry, made them very triggered. But they keep glancing at this object or glancing at something. And, and, and like they're using it as fuel to write what they're writing right now. Let me see if I could see more about this person. I feel like whoever this person is, um, they grew up very confined. Um, now, I don't know why... They're using the word confined and not sheltered because it feels like shelter, but they use the word confined. Um, this person may even have been um, sectioned or institutionalized at a young age. Or they could have had very, very controlling parents who may have restricted um, their movements, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of control issues, like maybe even controlling, controlling their food, um, what they wear to the extreme. So it, it's that it's that kind of attachment that they have with control because that's what they grew up with. So this person, um, I don't want to say that they're in HR because then some of you guys are in HR, but they may have chosen. Um, an HR related profession because 
it gives them a legal um, and ethical basis by which they can control others. That's what I'm saying. So their reasons for getting into HR is because they want to have control, right? So you might you might have chosen HR because you want to develop talent, right? Okay, you like spotting the talent and nurturing it and developing it. But this is not why this person chose HR. But it's it's a profession like HR where they have legitimate control over other people. And they chose that profession because of that. And they're furious. Now, I don't know if they are writing... Um, This could be somebody from work, you know. They could be writing a staff assessment. It could be that. Or it could be someone personal. But this person's about control. And again, very much like the first person, it's because they can't control it, why they're feeling so destabilized. Okay? I can ask about this second person now. So we have the first person. Second person. Well, let's ask what the what the hell are they writing? Why? All right, let's see what's what else is here. I'll just keep going until there are no more messages. So I see that you are someone's muse. That's the word that came through. Muse. You're someone's inspiration. Now, I see this person. They're lying down in bed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they've just woken up for a dream, from a dream. But they're lying down in bed. And there's some little notes that they're taking. Um, I don't, it's on their, ta I don't their tablet on their, or their phone. Okay. It feels like in their dream state, they receive some sort of important message. That's like the final piece in a puzzle for a project that they're, they're about to undertake. So I see them writing this information now because information down because they don't want to forget. And then I see this person like flipping through their phone. They're reading, they're reading a conversation. And as they read your conversation, I see them like glowing, like a gold color. Like they're reading your conversation for like support. You know, some people, um, they may drink for Dutch courage before they do something. This person is like... like I don't want to sound barbaric or anything like that. But it's like they're drinking in your energy before they make some kind of move. I, I don't think there's a move towards you. It feels like this is something that they've been working on. I feel like it's it's a it's it's a physical thing that they will create. Or it may even be um making the tr transition to be an entrepreneur or maybe if they are an entrepreneur already, they're launching a new product. But it's like they're soaking in your words. Your words are giving them the strength to like believe in themselves and believe in the product. That's what I get. So they're reading your messages It's like you're giving this person life, you know what I mean? Oh, 
we see them roll over on their side and, and they're, they're just thinking. They're no longer looking at the phone. They're just thinking now. And it's just a sense of longing. But also um, like a feeling of regret though. Like a big, it's a big sigh. Like if only things were different or something like that. I feel like this person might be a little down at this time. And maybe that's why your words are, you know, have so, have so much resonance for them um, at this time. I see someone else behind this person. They're not on the bed with them. They're kind of standing. Your person's pretending to be asleep. And this person's just looking at them. They're coming closer. They also look kind of wistful, like they wish things would be different. It feels like um, even though these two people might like share the same house or even, or even share the same bed, it feels like there's distance. Your person doesn't want the interaction. And this other person doesn't know what to do. Mm -mm. They don't know what to do. I see that person crying. And the feeling that I'm getting is just helplessness. Like, they just really don't know what to do. Like, where do they go from here? What, what's left to do? In this. So they are vibrating the energy of hopelessness. And your person vibrating in the energy of regret. For some of you. Um, this person that's there. Um, may not be an intimate partner. That person that just came into the room um, could be a mother figure. And it looks like they've had a falling out. It's almost like um, like an emotional standoff. Right? Um, maybe this person is used to having a lot of say and control over how this other person lives their life. But like recently there's been some sort of disconnect and, and they don't know how to pull it back together. So even when they're like, even if they're living in the same house, they've gone low contact um, with each other. Hello, good morning, how do you do? Have you walked the dog? And it just breaks this other person's heart because they thought that they've always supported the, your person, that they've always done the right thing, that they've made sacrifices, you know, to help your person get where they are. But it feels like these days, like all they do is kind of butt heads. But I feel like they're butting heads because your person's asserting themselves. I think before, maybe your person allowed this person to just, well, whatever. I don't really have a strong 
um, view on things or whatever. Everything is everything, <laughs> as we say in my country. Everything is everything. But now your person is like, mm -mm, everything is not everything. They're, they're sharing your, their opinions very forcefully. And I don't think this person um, is used to that. I think when it comes to this particular person, your person is a yes man or a yes girl or a yes someone. You know what I mean? So this change in the dynamic of the relationship has this other person very, very confused. They don't know how to deal with this new person that your person has become. They don't know how to deal with that. And their feelings of helplessness now is also taking them time, taking them back to a time where they felt helpless. So I feel like whoever this person is, see, just like the other the other piece, the other people that were in your life that we're gonna ask about, just like how they wanted to control you, this person wanted to control um, your person. Because that's the only way that they feel safe. It's it's an inner child wound. So now it's because they're no longer in control of the situation. It's dredging up a whole lot of stuff um, from the past. It feels like with their own mother figure. So again, we have that restriction um, theme coming out yet again. Just it just feels so sad, really. But it's it's a dynamic and a paradigm that had to collapse to allow these both people here um, to grow. Because your person stepping into their own power is also going to allow this person to really self-reflect. It's already happening. It's already happening. Okay. Seeing the same change. So let me see what else is here. They bring me back to where we started, which is um with that portal near the bookcase. So I think for, um, for a lot of you, this is going to be the most important message um, that you receive. So we come back to um, square one. So maybe that's also another message that maybe you feel like you've you've come full circle. On, a, on another issue, but you're getting a different perspective because I'm getting a different perspective on that portal now, right? But you're getting a different perspective um, on, on, a, on a cycle, on an issue that you may have been powering through for a long time. That's what I see. Um, not seeing anything else here. So let me just... Um, get some advice for you and then we will head to the extended what's the advice that spirit wants to give you today so we're going to ask those questions that we wrote down um we're going to look at your person's energy um towards you and their energy generally and then we're going to ask what's going to be the next move towards within a month of you watching this, this reading. But in the meantime, what is, we're going to get a message from your higher self. And we're going to get a message from your guides. What's the message that they want to tell you today? All right. We have listening within, right? So right now, you're not taking any advice from outside of yourself right? Everything that you need to do to figure out what's the next move 
um, is going to be found in quiet contemplation because we have a card number 16, which reduces to 14. And 14 is the energy of temperance and temperance is stillness. You're so balanced. You're, cen you're centered. Okay? So that is the energy right now. Okay, let's have a look. What is the message from your higher self? We have having it all. So I feel like this is the energy of don't settle. Don't settle. Whatever you may have envisioned for your life, whether it's the love, the career, the abundance, uh, the path, whatever you've envisioned for your life, Spirit is letting you know that you are limitless. You just keep on moving forward. Okay, card number 70 reduced to 7, which is a chariot and the number of the divine. So Spirit is saying you can have it all. The only limitation is your own mind. And the message from your guides... we have grace it feels like you've done so much work especially regarding taking back your power we have a card eight eight here and eight is the the vibration of strength twice you've done such a good job with taking back your power um and really showing your strength and developing your spiritual gifts um and you know just not giving your power away any longer that you are about to experience a period of grace. Now they're twins here. It could be that ex that extends to your counterpart as well. But whatever you have been longing for, Spirit is saying that you are about to get a divine gift. Okay? All right. So if you'd like, join me in Extended. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in today. Take care of yourselves. I mean, um, that solar eclipse was pretty powerful. And a lot of things came up that you have to focus um, on releasing, okay? All right, so just take care of yourself. All right, take care.